Somebody give Jesus Christ the loudest praise in the house, the loudest praise. Hallelujah. Give it up for Jesus, the King of glory. Lord give it up for Jesus. Jesus, the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. He is the first and the last. He makes you the head and never the tail. I receive. Because of him you win always. I receive. I can hear you get crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah. For Jesus. Glory yes. to Jesus. I say for Jesus. Hallelujah. He conquered the grave. He lives forevermore. Lord. Somebody have a Jesus. I'm feeling something right here, right now. And I believe that something will happen to somebody who's here believing God. If it is your wave to me, you have faith. Something good will happen to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now I want you to please find a neighbor. Give him a high five. Sealing the miracle of the grace. High five. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. I am glad to have today my precious daughter. She has always been here. Am I for life? She does not stay in um, the country anymore. She relocated. She's a powerful business woman. The Lord has just blessed her. Glory to blessed. Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, she, she served in this house since Linda's. Yes. Faithfully so. And uh, I'm just uh, blessed to see her and see what God is doing. Hallelujah. My daughter, Emma. Put your hands together for Glory her. Glory to Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And on the other side, I see a son. Is his first time or second time coming here? He's a minister of the gospel, serving God in a mighty way. He's all the way from the Democratic Republic of Congo, from Kinshasa. Prophet Fidel, God bless you, my dear son. Glory you are welcome. Jesus. And may you stay in Johannesburg. Be a blessing. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Now, across the globe, yesterday, we all were hit by the sad news of the passing to glory of Rena Bonke. Uh, mm. Now, majority of us know who Rena Bonke is. We know his ministry, his labor, in the kingdom of God. Renal Bonke is, as we say, not dead. He moved from this realm to another. We understand. Amen. But the passing to glory leaves us almost empty handed and separation is painful, hence we cry. He died 79 years old 79 years old he served god especially in africa it is said that uh, through his ministry evangelism in africa he has uh, won 77 million people Glory to jesus christ to jesus But uh, the significance of this uh, for you and I, for those of you around the globe who can hear God, must understand that uh, times and ch seasons are completely shifting and changing. That's right. Many in our living, many in our generation, have witnessed the departure of great men of God who really stood as pillars and columns in the kingdom of God. 
We need more in our bonkers now That's than right. ever. If Renal Bonke has finished his course, mm -hmm. I promise you, the church of God must understand there is a shift. There is a time that is passing. Mm -hmm. We living now have witnessed the departures of people like Aura Robert. We have witnessed Kenneth Hagen Sr. going. Those men have impacted the kingdom of God. On the television world, we have seen Paul and Jane Crouch going. They birthed something. They had a vision. And that this I speak on the assignment in God, not with regard to their personal lives. We had people like uh, Billy Graham who have served God. Who would be the next Billy Graham? That's right. Many of us today still stand bold in faith because we have seen people of the stature standing bold in faith. And because of that, in the shadow of the work, in the shadow of the boldness, we also found strength to stand. Now that all of them have gone, not all of them, those I have mentioned have gone. And those who remain, they are all in the 60, end of 60s, 70s, and so forth. They're not as strong as yesterday. God needs a generation, a new generation. If we miss the call for this season, let me tell you, our children will not know God. That's right. Christianity as we know it will become so irrelevant that we will all again go through a time of silence that we cannot afford in the last days. Because you see, in history, the history of church, you will realize that uh, there, there have been repeatedly times where God was silent. For 430 years, Israel was uh, in Egypt. God was silent. After that, in the time of the judges, 430 years again, God was silent. There was no prophet. God literally here and there intervened among his people using judges. And when we go through the time of Malachi to John the Baptist, God was silent. Nothing happened until Jesus Christ was born. John the Baptist first. And after the apostles, it went again, silence. Once the apostles that uh, were with Jesus Christ died and all of them, there was a time of silence. We cannot afford that. That's why many of us today across the globe must understand beyond fighting one another, beyond making our ministry a ministry of criticizing others, mm. pointing fingers, we must understand the body of Christ is one. That's right. That is right. So if we do not do what we need to do, all of us, each one of us in his own corner. Look, we may not like the, the, the guts of uh, you know, each other. We may not like the operation, the style of each other. Some are loud, some are not loud. Some seem to be boasting. Some seem to be very humble or very religious. It does not matter. Mm -hmm. There is only one cross and we are part of his body. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Renard Bonke is gone. He is in glory. We cry here, heaven is rejoicing. Ora Roberts, the same. Kenneth Hagen, senior, when that happened, the same. Billy Graham, when that happened, it was the same. Earth, we cry, heaven rejoice. But uh, who are the next names? That's right. Who are the next generals? Everyone today is looked as evil, froster. Last night, I cried for the church. Mm. At the news of the going to glory of Rena Bonke. Look, I have not known Rena Bonke personally. The only time I saw Rena Bonke personally or close by, 
and we greeted and spoke. It was at the robot traffic light. <laughs> I promise you, I was driving my Mercedes Benz that uh, you could not go past without noticing. Uh huh. <laughs> Don't be jealous now. And behind my car was written in big, Jesus. So as I passed the car where he was, they were interested. How can you drive this and you put Jesus Christ? Something about you. So at the robot, Renard Bonke, that was here in Johannesburg, you know, he lowered the window and greeted me. He did not Jesus. know me. Glory to Jesus. Wow. The only reason why he greeted me was because he was a soul winner and he saw a man in the car, which was not a broken car, and he was advertising Jesus Christ. And he was proud of that. He did not know that I'm pastor. He did not know my name. But I knew everything about it. Hallelujah. This is to say, whatever I am saying about Renan Bonke is not because he has been a personal friend. I thank God. Uh, many have been very close to him. Many have seen him. Uh, my, my precious friend, George Bruma, uh, Bluma, has known uh, pr probably Renan Bonke and many, many others that I've mentioned here. The fact that I cried last night, I was not crying the passing of a man. I was understanding what is happening in the body of Christ yes. today. God is raising up generals, but I think it's not enough. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Aflu Kao must do a hundred times what Aflu Kao is doing now. I think that uh, you seated there, you must also do hundred times I would say. what you are doing now. We must stand together and lift Jesus Christ. When he will be exalted, Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. Are we together? I want you to take a minute to lift your right hand and pray for the church. Don't pray for AMI only. Pray for the body of Christ. Ask God to remember the church to bless us as a church, the body of Christ, in our different congregations and names and dogmas. Bless us, O oh God. Let us understand what is happening today. And help us, Lord, look past our mistakes, our differences, and bring us in unity. Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray. Jesus. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, one of my son is here, has been here. The Lord blessed him. He is anchored on this altar. His spiritual umbilical cord is linked to mine. But today is a very interesting day. It's a day of promotion where he's going somewhere. And it's also a day where I need to introduce him because of what he's doing. The Lord spoke to him and he shared with me that he wanted to go and live in a different country from South Africa. And he wanted to go and live with his family. He told me that uh, there is a door that God is open. So we've been working on that for, I think, a few months or a year or so. And that which was a project is now a reality. It's moving from here to a different country, and uh, he will leave a void, but uh, every time he can come, he will be here. I want us to pray for him. I am talking about the Bones family, Vincent Bone. Will all the bones please come? Glory to Jesus.
my precious daughter, with the last baby. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, my daughter. Well, my son, my daughter, and the children with the baby here, Judah, will be leaving. Today will be the official last Sunday. On the 12th, is that the 12th? On the 12th, they'll be leaving for the United States of America. Glory to Jesus. They will be serving God there, and as the Lord will allow, every time they come, there will be a blessing to us. I want you and I to pray for them. They have been extremely close and great blessings. You know about that? Yes. So stretch your hand, let's bless them. Father, we thank you. Yes, Jesus. I thank you for my precious son, mm. my daughter and their children my god my lord may your hand be upon them we give you glory hallelujah the ivp start from the 29th of december we are in december 
I want to really uh, appeal to you to please be part and parcel of this IVP. Let's close the year together to start another all together on this altar. If this altar means something to you, if in one way or another the Lord had spoken you, spoken to you directly or indirectly that you have to be here, I want you to exercise your faith to be here. Exercise your faith for the means to come. Exercise your faith for the visa to be granted if you need a visa to come. But uh, from the 29th is a Sunday till the first three nights. I want you to be here. I will pray with you. I'll minister to you myself. And I know that uh, many of us do I lay hands on everyone. Many of you will say, I want to have a one-on-one -on -one with pastor. We will try to make that happen. We will try to make happen to as many people as we can where I minister to you and that I can exchange uh, with you or sit and speak with you. Now, one of the things that is extremely key is what I'm holding in my hand. This envelope is key. See, when you connect with your altar, your sacrifice, your seed is valuable, significant, both in the natural realm and in the spiritual realm. In the year end like this, even natural people will come to you and say, I'm giving you a bonus because you have worked good or because you had remained here. Now, if people in a natural realm will do that for you, how much more your God? Are you hearing me? God will say, you've been faithful, I give you more. Now, in return, you too must say, Lord, you have been with me through winds and high waters. Lord, I bring my sacrifice. I bring my seed. This one, to me, to my children, and to all of you, I believe is not an option. It is a must because of our faith. Now, I'm saying this not to pressurize any of you. I'm saying this as your leader, as your coach, so you may understand. I have here my seed offering. This is significant to say, Lord, for everything that uh, you have done for me. I went through winds and high waters. They wanted me down, but I'm still standing. Oh, God. For every battle you fought for me, yes. oh God. This is my sacrifice. This is to say thank you to you. Uh, please, I have a seat. I'll make you stand just now. I want you to understand what I'm saying. For everything, Lord, I could have been dead and gone. In the post, I say, to wake up every morning is not a routine. It wow. is the grace of God. Hallelujah. You go to bed and you wake up. It's not my routine. I wake up tomorrow. There are many who go to bed and cannot make it up. That's right. So it is for all of us to significantly come to God. If at least you value him, if you value anything that he has done, and if you are prophetic, you say, Lord, I put a significant seed to say thank you. More also, I bring a seed that will represent my expectation in 2020. Look, with your seed, you live. Amen. That's right. If you understand your seed, you live. Now, family, I am not here raising funds because this concerns me too. I am sharing with you something important, extremely important. You may be giving more as you go in 2020, but you must know nothing will beat what you began by putting on the ground. This might be 
really the launch pad for every other seed. So it must be sacrificial, meaning you must feel it, and it must be significant to you. If it means nothing to you, it might mean nothing to God. So I want all of you to have this. As we cross over, this is what will touch the altar for you and for your family to say thank you for 2019 and prepare you for 2020. If you are not here, but you are in ministries, you connect with me in India, in Pakistan, you watch from Dubai, you are watching from America, from North, South, you are watching from Canada, you are watching from uh, uh, some part of Africa, wherever you may be watching from in Europe, I want you to also do the same. You may not have a physical envelope, but you will have the number on the screen, the, uh, the details, the bank details. Use it and say, I will throw my sacrifice and my thanksgiving. Those of you who have not yet received this envelope and uh, you want to receive it and been praying for it until the time comes where you give to God next week, the other week, or in the crossover, can I see your hand? Someone will give it to you. Can I have people who have it to quickly distribute it very quickly? Keep your hands up. If you did not have it yet and you are ready to receive it, please make it an assignment. This is my seed offering. It's my sacrificial seed. You write your name on it. You put your contact details on it. And you, if you can, write your number. If you do not want to write your name, put an initial. The reason why you have to do that is because all the empty envelopes, when it is emptied by the accounts, they're not thrown away. It becomes a point of contact for my intercessory ministry. I bring it on my altar. I lay hands on it and I declare words over it. You know, sometimes I have session in the prophetic just with papers where God will pull one envelope and I see the person through the envelope, the Lord is telling me, pray for this, 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 this on this person. Mm. So I want you to take it seriously. Write your name, your details, phone numbers. If not, still fine. If you don't want people to know you, just put an initial. At least when I'm praying over the initial, we will know that it is directed to you as your point of contact. Those of you who will be doing it from out of South Africa, from abroad, please just make sure that you write, you, you write as a reference. You see the offering for 2019 and 2020. And God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Did you all receive it? Did you all receive it? If you didn't receive it, wave. Someone will see you and give it to you. If you have not received it, when you get your bonus, remember your God. Hallelujah. Without your God, there will be no bonus. When you are you look at your account and you say, this is the saving of the year. Remember your God. We have to build the kingdom of God. And we need to strengthen our personal altar that is linked to this altar. Now, the time we've been waiting for, the time where God himself will be visible through a man has come. The moment of power. Mm -hmm. The moment where the Lord manifests himself with power has arrived. Are you ready? We are ready. I'm asking, are you ready? 
Now, once again, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters from around the world, please have me welcome on the stage of AMI, a great man of God, one and only, Bishop George Blumer. Hallelujah! Somebody! I can't hear you, AMI! Put your hands together for the pastor of this house, Apostle! neighbor and say to your neighbor say neighbor if you shut up and sit down we can have some church look at your neighbor and say neighbor I can't do that I got to give God praise today because he's so good so good lift your hands and say so good Woo! you may be seated in the presence of the Lord it's a blessing and a privilege to be here I honor the set man of this house Apostle Alf Lucal I honor you today in the name of Jesus we're here this week on assignment, we've been working on a series called Finding Faith, which carried me across the nation uh, to, for a documentary type of a series. Uh, Mike, we would say docu-series? Docu-series on ministry and uh, some ministries that are phenomenal, gifted, and people just don't quite understand it. We want to expose it to the world. And uh, your pastor is on the docu-series. That's the reason why we're here. This morning, I want to talk to you for a few minutes, um, if I can, about spiritual warfare. And I want to... I want to confront some demons that's been fighting us. And I want us to walk in supernatural power. So if you would just for a few moments, bear with me as I share something with you. I learned how to read 20 some odd years ago. So all of my adult life, I couldn't read, write, or spell, and I still have my challenges with that now. One of the gifts of learning how to read, one of the gifts of learning how to read, can you bring my mic down just a little bit? It's like too hot. One of the gifts in learning how to read late is that I don't read the way you read. You read and you just read it through. And the Lord said, da, 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 because you've been doing it. When I read, when I read, I have to read, and the Lord 
said. Which means that I wind up catching things that you didn't catch in your speed reading. So he has given me a gift to catch in scripture what many of us don't catch and see. Because of that, there has been assigned to me spirits of distraction that wants to make sure that I am distracted so I can't get that part of the job done. Touch two people and say, that won't happen this morning. <laughs> if I was going to be speaking today on any other topic other than spiritual warfare, there would be no problem, it's Mike. The mere fact that I'm getting ready to expose some things, Satan's greatest tool in the church is distractions. Touch your neighbor and say, that won't happen this morning. <laughs> Touch your other neighbor and say, we're gonna get what God has for us. So I wanna deal with three spirits of distraction. And I want to prepare you for your deliverance today. You have to, you have to decree and declare that today is my day of deliverance. Everything that's been holding me back is going to drop off. Today I walk free. Now there are, there are spirits and there are forces that just heard what you said and they went into work to make sure that whatever you said about yourself is not going to happen, but it's going to happen today. I want you to turn into your Bible. I'm going to do two or three scriptures today and we're going to look at it. Two or three scriptures today and we're going to look at it a little bit differently. The first one is Jeremiah chapter number 18. Jeremiah chapter number 18. Everybody say Jeremiah chapter number 18. I love this church. I, I, I love your church. I, 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 yeah. I love church. Jeremiah chapter number 18. Now, I, I want to read to you, so that means that it's going to be a little slower. Okay? And then when it goes fast, I won't be reading. I will be talking from my memory. Jeremiah, chapter number 18, verse number 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went to the potter's house and, and there he was making something on the wheel. Uh -huh. And the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Am I still going, doing good? All right, all right. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, finally God speaks, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter? He asks this question. So I want to talk to you for a few moments about the potter and the potter's house. Jeremiah chapter number 18. This is what it says. You're going to leave it there? You're going to leave it there? That's where it's going to go? Where are you going to bring it? Okay. All right. 
This is a potter's wheel. Everybody say potter's wheel. And uh, you got some muffs for me? Thank you so much. This is the potter's wheel. And This is you. This is you. The text. And the Lord spake unto Jeremiah and he says, Arise and go down to the potter's house for there I will speak unto you or speak my words to you. So the first part of the text was this, that where he was, he couldn't hear from God. So the Lord had to move him from where he was to bring him to a place where he could hear the word of God. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, arise and get down to the potter's house because there I'm going to speak to you. There you're going to hear my words. So he obeyed God and he arose and he went to the potter's house. When he got down to the potter's house, he saw the potter working a great work on the wheel. Some translation says on the wheels, plural, on the wheels. So there's a piece of clay that is being spun on the wheels and the potter is working with this piece of clay. The text goes on to say something that is powerful but frightening at the same time. It says, and the vessel to which the potter had made was marred in the potter's hand. So the vessel did not come to the potter broken, it was the potter who broke the vessel. And the vessel was marred in the hands of the potter. The first area of deliverance we're going to do this morning is for individuals who wear as a badge of honor the fact that they were hurt in a church. There are people, apostle, who have what they call church hurt. And they will tell you the reason why they don't go to church, the reason why they act the way they act is because something had to happen to them in church. Now these are the same people who will not tell you that they have job hurt or grocery store hurt or, 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 or beauty salon hurt. It's just church hurt. Something happened in a church, you got hurt and you was not able to get over it. And I happen to know why you're not able to get over it. So I'll tell you a story. Because the story of the, prof the prophecy of the, of, of the potter having the clay and the clay being marred or broken in the potter's hand is rehearsed by Jesus. So there's a story that is told in the word of God where Jesus is ministering to the multitudes, uh, to, to multitudes and they're all there and the day weighs long, it gets late. And so now Jesus uh, uh, looks and he's continued to teach. One of the disciples go to him and said, Master, the day has weighed long. Let's, let's free, free the people so they can go get something to eat for themselves. And Jesus turns and he says unto them, feed them, give them something to eat. And they say to Jesus, Master, we have nothing but uh, five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus says, well, gather them all together. This is a desert place. Cause them to sit down on the grass and they follow the instructions. And then Jesus takes the loaves and he blesses them and then he breaks them. And then he gives them to the disciples, the disciples to the multitude and the multitude is fed. The miracle of multiplication does not take place in the hands of Jesus, but it takes place in the hands of the disciples. 
as the disciples follows the instructions, then the Lord begins to move and begins to bless. How many disciples were there? 12. How many baskets of fragments did they take up? 12. Anytime you obey God and do what God tells you to do, he sends you home with a care package. But here's the point. Here's the point. I'm going to pray for that group of people. Here's the point. If you are not blessed to be broken and you get broken, no one can mend you back together again. So every person who goes through a crisis, goes through a storm, is attacked by demonic forces, it didn't happen to you by mistake, and Satan certainly didn't just show up and come after you. There was an agreement and negotiations that went on in the back room with God, and the agency of evil, and God gave him stipulations in the contract. You can do this, but you can't do that. You, you can move in this area, but you can't touch that. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And, 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 and the devil, watch, watch, watch this. The Bible says, and the sons of God came to present themselves unto the Lord, and Lucifer came also. And he said, where are you coming from, Lucifer? He said, to and fro and up and down. Notice what he made. To and fro, back and forth, up and down. He makes the sign of the cross. And the Lord says, the only way you can deal with my servants, you have to operate within the confounds of the cross. Where crucifixion taking place and where I am standing in agreement for breakthrough, for deliverance, thank you so much, for them. If you are not blessed to be broken, if you are not blessed to be broken and you get broke, something happens to you, you can't be put back together again. So the clay is here. He works with the clay and he makes a vessel. He finds out that the vessel that he made was marred in his hand. He pressed too hard. Something happened and the vessel was damaged. This is a good potter. Although something happened, he's a good guy. So what he did, he examined it, and he took it, and he broke it. Threw it through the sifter, so that it came out to fine pieces of sand-like material. Poured water over it, put it in a plastic bag, set it outside for a day, and as it came back together as a block of clay, he put it back on the potter's spool. When he got back on the potter's spool, he now spun it, and made the vessel that was a vessel that was good enough for the potter to see that this is good. He understands that the clay that this vessel was made out of had been broken, but this new vessel has brokenness in it, but it's no longer affected by it. I wish I had a church in here today. Now here's the point. Here's the point. If you take the vessel of clay and you work with it and you find out that it is marred or it is damaged and you carry it back through the process of making it clay again and you put it on the potter's spool, when it comes out, if you do not see that the vessel has some issues with it and you take it and you sit the vessel outside and the vessel dries, then you take the vessel and you place shellac on the vessel and then take the shellac vessel and put it in the oven. The shellac on the vessel crystallizes the vessel. If you find out that the vessel is marred after you shellacked it, there's nothing you can do with it. If you were to take it, break it, put it in a sifter and make it into fine little pieces of, of, of sand-like uh, clay, and then put it back on the potter's spool while you're spending it, if you touch it, it will cut you to pieces. There are many people that we find in our ministries and in our churches that were shellacked. A finishing solution was placed on them before they were made over. 
And so if you touch them, they will rip you and everything about you to pieces. And those people are sitting in this assembly today who have come from other places, whipped, wounded, hurt, destroyed, ostracized, criticized, and shellacked. And those are the individuals that Satan uses to come against the authority of ministry. Oh, I wish I had a church today. So I want to talk to the first group of people who are here in our deliverance service who has gone through something and you can't get over what you went through and you're mean and you're cantankerous and, and you, you just don't agree with nothing. No is at the top of your list and you didn't even hear what the person said yet. How you doing? No, uh, uh, fine. I want you to receive your deliverance this morning. Now, 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 I, 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 I know we're not going to get a big amen out of that because who wants to expose the fact that they may have been shellacked? But I come to tell you today that God has given me a shellac remover. And that the blessings of the Lord will rest on you and rest on your life today in an unusual way. Because 2020 is the year that this ministry is going global. And we can't afford to have demons disguised as disciples in the camp. So let me pray for you. Every person who has gone through, you can be seated, every person who has gone through a situation where it just wounded you and you were hurt by it and it seemed like you just couldn't get past it and it keeps on coming up, I want you to stand up on your feet. I want to put this removal on you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. 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 Because some of the people that don't like us, some of the people who have problems with us, is not us at all. It's not us at all. Who karabashataba? Now, I know you want me to go through some sort of a ceremony, but guess what? Your healing and your deliverance and your breakthrough happened when you stood up. Because Satan, Satan operates in the dark. And the minute you turn the light on, he's like a roach that scatters. I come to tell you, you're standing, turn the light on, and I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the, to receive the joy of the Lord in your life and on you this day in the name of Jesus. That freedom and breakthrough will be your portion. You are about to be some of the best members that this church and if you're visiting, your church has ever had because the shellac has been stripped off of you and now you're able to laugh again. I dare you to start laughing right now. Look how hard it is for you to laugh. Laugh, laugh. <laughs> I said laugh. <laughs> get, it, get, get it out of there. <laughs> try, come on, come on. <coughs> try, come on, try. <coughs> There it goes. And you're pretty when you laugh. Oh, you like that, didn't you? Give the Lord a hand clap. You can be seated. Deliverance area number two.
September the 4th, in Detroit, Michigan, I had a wake-up call. I was the host of Rejoice in the Word on the Word Network for eight or 10 years. I'm not sure what the number was. It's an African-American network owned by a Caucasian Jewish man. I became the face of that network. A man who couldn't read, couldn't write, couldn't spell, dropped out of school. The Lord anointed me to do great and mighty exploits for him. And I love the position that I had at the Word Network. Long story short, on the 4th of September, he shows me a racist meme. I tell him that's not good. And for 10 days, he taunts me with racial slurs and what have you. Nothing he said to me, nothing he said to me, I could hear him saying. Everything, apostle, he said to me was in the voice of my father. You see, my dad had nine children with my mother and went out of the wedding barn and had 15 other children by six women in the area to which we grew up in. I loved my father, I loved him, I loved him, I loved him, but that guy never loved me. And I did everything within my power, bear with me for a few minutes, I did everything within my power and within my strength for him to love me, but he, for whatever reason, would not. He just didn't love me at all. I remember growing up as a little kid, there was things he would say to me. He would come in if the room wasn't clean. He'd kick me in my back or throw me on the floor, punch me. But he never, he never took me in his arms and hugged me. He never said, George Gary, you're, you, 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 you're a good kid. You're going to amount to anything. Never that. Never that. We, we grew up under just some difficult, difficult situations. I remember my father called one day and he says, I'm gonna take George Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. I woke up early on Christmas Eve and I sat next to the door at 6 a.m. in the morning with my toe bargain on and my ski coat on, waiting for my dad to show up and uh, six o'clock in the morning and uh, by nine o'clock, folks in the family was getting up and my mother was cooking some sausage and biscuits and what have you. My sister woke up and said, what you doing there? She said, mm -mm, be quiet, be quiet, don't say anything to him. If he wants to believe that his dad is coming, let him believe that. I'm nine years old at the door. And uh, 12 noon comes, he's not there. Four o'clock in the afternoon, the festivities for Christmas is happening. Nine o'clock in the nighttime, people are dancing, drinking, smoking, partying, card games going. I'm still sitting at the door because the word that that man spoke to me meant everything to me. And I'm there sitting at that door at nine years old, waiting for him to come and get me. 1201 Christmas morning, he never showed up. And I'm, I'm telling you, I believe that that was the day that the spirit of rejection was rooted in me. And that was the day that illiteracy was going to take its root. Drug addiction was going to take its root. I was going to prison all because of what transpired at that door, that day, that day. My mother raised us on government subsidies. So she says, there's things I can't do for you for your birthday because I don't have the money on your birthday, but I'll do for you for your birthday. So my birthday uh, was January the 23rd and uh, the subsidy check didn't come. So she had to have my birthday in February. And I remember my birthday on February, my mother uh, made a nice little chocolate cake and the cake was leaning because they put the icing on it before the cake got, you know, was, 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 was still warm. And we used some potato chips and, and my favorite potato chips was onion and garlic potato chips. Mike, there's a bag of onion and garlic potato chips in my room here in South Africa. I travel with onion and garlic potato chips. If you get too close to my mouth, you can smell the onions and garlic. And we were dancing at the party and we had the onion and garlic. And, and there was a little kid, his name was Kevin Holmes, who was a real, real good dancer. I mean, he could dance. And, and everybody wanted Kevin at their party because Kevin was going. But the potato chips was over on the side. And we were a poor family. And I wanted my party to last. And he knew how to dance and coordinate his dancing with eating potato chips. So he... 
and he's, my potato chips is going too quick. So I go over to him to confront him, not to eat up all the potato chips. He pushes me, I push him. We have a fight, my mother gets upset. My mother whips me on my birthday, sends me to, to my room. They're out dancing. I fall asleep and when I wake up, my birthday cake was cut and the candles were blown out. From age eight to age 50, I did not celebrate birthday. If you mentioned birthday to me, we had a problem. Something happened. My mom did something my dad did. At age 12, there's a lady, 453 Columbia Street, apartment 3D, who I used to do chores for. I would go to the store for her and, 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 and go to the laundry mat for her and do things for her and she would give me a dollar or 50 cents or two dollars. And back in the 70s, that was a whole lot of money for a little kid to have. And she had a living lover, a man who used to live with her, it wasn't a husband, but he lived with her and they broke up and he moved out. And I'm going up there to do chores for her, and I noticed that when he moved out, she would hug me all the time, but her hugs got longer, and her kisses got closer to my mouth. I'm 11, 12-year-old boy. I'm 12 years old, and this, this happens. And at age 12, on the hottest summer in August, she introduced me to the adult world of sexuality. At 12 years old, I'm abused by a 30, 32 or 36-year-old woman. And I remember going to public school 27s and telling the social worker there, his name was Mr. Rosenberg, and I told Mr. Rosenberg what happened. He said, well, get over it. At least it wasn't a man, and now you are a man, and let it go. But for some reason, I couldn't let it go because destiny and purpose God had already assigned to my life. When I started preaching the gospel at the age 17, then from 17, when I was in my 30s, I believe I was about 34, 35 years old, I got I wind that she had passed away. And uh, for all those years, I was carrying the 12-year-old boy inside of me. His, 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 his head stopped where my chest was and his feet where my ankles were, and I carried that situation with me. My mother told me that she had passed away and so I came to New York City to go to the funeral services and in her later years, her eyes were kind of dim and she wore bifocal glasses. And I remember Apostle going into the, uh, to the room where she was at and uh, laid out and they had her bifocals, her glasses in her hand. And when the service was over, they said, tomorrow morning we're gonna have the full service. Um, uh, I said, Ma, can I have a few moments with her? My mother knew that I did chores for her, so my mother said, okay, fine. When everyone left, I went over to her and I don't know what happened to me, Apostle. I took the glasses out of her dead hands, broke the glasses and threw them in the coffin and turned around and walked out. When I walked out, there was a physical manifestation. The boy that was in my chest and in my ankles grew into my feet and grew into my head. I was immediately delivered from something that I had been holding for a long time. Jan Crouch of TBN, here comes deliverance, calls and says, we're doing a special program for fathers and sons. Bishop Jakes is going to bring his son, and Jones is going to bring his son, and, 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 and Martin is going to bring his son. And I would like, we, we, if, you don't, if you don't have a son that is preaching, bring, the, the father can come. It's sons and fathers together. And I wanted my dad to come to me. So I called my sister and I said, do you know where dad is at? Listen, apostle, I was... I, I, I wanted to be a part of, 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 of this thing that Jan Crouch of TBN was doing to the point that I called my sisters and I said, help me to find dad because I want him to go on TBN with me. He wasn't even saved. I didn't care. I just wanted him to go. I wanted to be with the big boys. And sometimes when you want to be with the big boys is when you miss what God has in store for you. And so... My sister said, if I knew where he was, I wouldn't tell you. But I kept on working hard because I wanted to find him. The year went by, I didn't find him. Father's Day was over. The next year came, she called again. And so I said, I gotta find him. So I went on my television program and I bought a watch from Jacobs and Son and, 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 and I held a watch up on TV. I said, if anybody knows where Thaddeus Bloom is, have him to call the church. About two weeks later, 
I'm leaving the pulpit as I'm preaching. My phone goes off. And I open up and I say, hello. And there's a woman on the line. She says, George. And I said, hello. She said, yeah. She said, George. I said, yes. She says, my name is Lucy. Do you remember me? I said, no. She says, I'm Teddy's girlfriend. Teddy's my dad. She said, I'm Teddy's girlfriend. She said, you're looking for Teddy. I said, yes, I'm, 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 I'm looking for daddy. She says, well, you don't remember me. And I said, no, I don't remember you. And she said, well, your daddy used to bring you to the house all the time. I said, for real? She said, yeah. She said, when you was about two months old. She crazy. I don't remember I'm two months old. <laughs> but I got mad because this woman was with my dad when I was two months old. My dad was taking me over to this woman's house. My father comes on the phone and he says this. He said, what you want? And I said, well, Dad, um, he said, well, hurry up, speak what you want. What you calling me for? Tracking me down. Like I'm some sort of a sucker or something. What's your problem? I said, there's, 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 there's no problem, Dad. Um, I, I just want to talk to you. I, um, now I'm nervous. I'm in my 40s, and he's talking to me, but I'm nine when, I, when, when he comes into the I'm nine years old. And I'm just, 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 I, I, I just want to call you, Dad, Dad, I, I, I know how to ride a bicycle. I'm not asking you to teach me how to ride a bicycle. Uh, 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 I don't play sports, so there's nothing you can help me with that. I, I just want to talk to you and just tell you that I love you and I, and, 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 and I got some things that are going. He said, oh, oh. He says, so how are you doing? And I said, fine. I said, where are you living at? He said, I'm living. Uh, on 7th Avenue. I said, you're on 7th Avenue? I said, yeah, I'm still on 7th Avenue. In Brooklyn? Yeah, in Brooklyn. Where you live? He said, I live over the top of the OTB. It was off-track betting. My dad was a gambler. My dad was a gambler. Nobody told me that my dad was a gambler. But my dad's DNA was on the inside of me because there was times when I would walk past places. And I feel like saying, come on, Jesus. <laughs> Hear my point. And me and my father, we talked on the phone. I flew into New York City and I went to meet my dad. Ah, oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. I met Thaddeus Bloom and he's talking to me. I bought him a pair of, of, of white, a shell top Adidas and a dungaree jeans and some shirts. I started paying his, his rent where he was living at. One afternoon he called me and he says, son, when you come into New York City, I need to sit down and have a little discussion. I said, dad, anything you want. After all, I'm affirmed now. I got a father. Nobody else, I, all, all the other guys had fathers. I ain't had nothing. Nothing but a prison rap, a drug rap, a thug rap. But now I'm anointed and I got my dad next to me. And I go to New York City and I drive him out to Manhattan. And we go to his favorite restaurant. He's sitting down and he's eating. And he looks across the table and he says, I need you to do something for me. And I said, anything you need. He says, I need you to. Give me a hundred thousand dollars. Not not a thousand. Not fifteen hundred. A hundred thousand. I said, I ain't giving you no hundred thousand dollars. He said, Yo, you gonna give me a hundred thousand dollars? He said, after all I did for you. What the world you did for me? <laughs> he said, You're gonna give me a hundred thousand dollars. You got it, and you're gonna give it to me. You all on TV, you writing books and everything like that. I need it, and you're gonna give it to me. I said, I ain't giving you and before I can get the word nut nothing out of my mouth. He snatched me across the table, front in the restaurant, thrust me up against the wall and with supernatural strength started sliding me up the wall. It's like a demon was on the inside of him. And so I moved my hand from where his hand was and I started choking him back and when he let me go, he punched me in my face. I ran out of the restaurant and I'm running and I forgot I had a car. And I run down the steps into the, into the subway, jump over the stile when someone is coming out and got on the train. And I'm riding on the train as the Lord would have it. I'm in a car by myself and the train is going and it's dark and I look up and the window is there and it gives a reflection and I got blood coming out of my mouth. This tooth is knocked completely out. Oh, I shouldn't have told you that. Now you know it's fake. This tooth is completely knocked out of my mouth. And... There's blood on my sneakers. And I'm crying to God. I say, Lord, what in the world happened? What in the world, what in the world is going on? And I heard the Lord speak to me in my own voice. And he said, this is what I've been trying to protect you from. 
But you had to be like everybody else. When mother and father forsake you, then the Lord shall take you up. God said, I want you to know that I am preoccupied with you. Here comes the deliverance. Every one of us in this room have had experiences that defines our personality. Watch this word that defines our person's reality. A reality that we exist in that might not be real to no one else. It is there, Mike, that I found my numbers. The combination, the, 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 the part of me that unlocks me and every one of you in here, you better find it because if you don't find it, people will be able to open you when you want to be closed. So my numbers is eight, birthday party. Nine, left by dad. 12, abused. 37, forsaken and beaten up by my dad. Lady called me and she says, the Holy Ghost said that you're my husband. I said, did the Holy Ghost tell you which one? I'm going to say it one more time so you get it. She said, the Holy Ghost said that I'm her husband. And I asked her, did, you, did the Holy Ghost tell you which one? Because when it comes down to me, it's five of us. Which one did he tell you going to be yours? The one that was at the door? The one that was abused? I hear babies crying in this room. And these babies that are crying are twofold. They're women whose wombs was not strong enough to hold the deposit, miscarried the child, and Satan visits them in the form of that baby in their dream life in their bedrooms. Then I hear the cry of babies like me. When we stop apostle doing hocus pocus deliverances and start really, really ministering to the needs of God's people, we're going to have breakthrough. And I'm almost, I'm almost a little afraid to open this up here, but many of you are going to be set free in the next 10 minutes from stuff that has held you bound for 12, 19, 40, 50 years of holding stuff that has held you bound. God is about to release an anointing, a breakthrough, and deliverance in your life. Like he did it for me, he's going to do the same thing for you. When I got here to South Africa, I have been telling Mike, one of the producers of the show we're doing, that I'm moving back into the area of deliverance. So we're here to come here to take the show. I'm scheduled to, for the show at one o'clock. We don't do the show until 3.30. I'm sitting in the presence of the apostle. While I'm sitting there, I'm planning on talking to him about what we're going to talk about as it relates to the program that's going on. When God is about to do something new and great and powerful in your life, he doesn't always tell you. Because if he tells you, you might not show up. So he sets you up for a cleanup. I'm in the room and I'm talking to the man of God. And this is what the man of God said to me. He says, there's two things you have to do, Bishop Bloomer. Number one, you have to pray.
pray, seek the face of God about embracing the prophetic. Embracing the prophetic. The second thing he says, and you must return back to the ministry of deliverance and warfare. Now, I have been approached in my sleep life, in my dream life, by demonic forces that are hideous and pretty. I have been approached by angels in my sleep life, in my dream life, that are hideous and pretty. I've had to deal with all different types of crises that have come my way, and I got to a place where having the title of general of spiritual warfare was enough. Because if I got to fight what I see, I'm not sure I want to continue to do that. If I got to fight what I see, I'm not sure I want to continue to do that. And I don't trust the people who are around me who is talking to me about moving forth. So the Lord stages something in another country I don't think they're hearing. He stages something in another country. I go to the country that he stages it in thinking I'm there to help when God staged it so we can have a chat. And I come to tell every demon and devil, get your hat and your coat. This is the season for spiritual warriors to rise up once again and take authority, take authority over the forces of the enemy. I come to tell you, glory be to God, my grandmother operated in witchcraft. Their church had no more than 20 people at a time in their church. My grandfather was sort of kind of, uh, 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 how can I say, he was... Um, passive and, 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 and wimpish but my grandmother was tough an old Jamaican girl tough and rough in her house there was flower pots everywhere I'm finna break some curses right now flower pots everywhere and in the flower pots was little men because women would come to her and talk about how their man was treating her so she would put a root or a fetish on them by writing their name and burying them in flower pots all over the house. The pastor's wife, my, 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 my grandfather was a bishop, his wife was the first lady, and she's working for the devil inside their church. There's more money coming to their house by what she does in the living room that comes in through tithe and offering. And my grandmother can't stand me. She doesn't like me, George Gary, John Derek Bloomer, that was my name. And she used to call me, stupid boy. You idiot, you idiot, you idiot, you idiot, you idiot. Come to man, idiot, idiot. Idiot, 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 idiot. Come, idiot. And stupid, stupid boy, stupid boy, stupid boy. Stupid. Every time a person said stupid, I would turn around. I couldn't tie my shoes until I was 12 or 13 years old. Still have a little problem with tying them now. <laughs> my grandmother said, if you don't tie your shoes today, I'm going to break your neck. She would take the drumstick off the drum and say, hold your hands out, and hit me at the tips of my fingers. And I said, I can't tie it now because my family, she, she was horrible. 
My sister said, she said, George, you got to tie your shoes because if you don't tie your shoes, grandma going to kill you. My sister made the bunny ears and looped it over tie. I said, well, it's tied. Leave it. She said, no, no, no. Grandma's going to, she's going to challenge you. And she was crying. And so while my sister was crying, I made the two bunny loops and flipped over and tied. I didn't learn how to tie my shoes because I was brilliant. I learned how to tie my shoes because I didn't want my sister to continue to cry. It was my first lesson in intercession that that what I was doing was not for me. It was for her. I'll be done in a minute. We're going to pray. And my grandmother had all these women coming in and out and what have you. One afternoon, I was going down the steps in her house, and I saw this little man laying on top of the dirt. So I moved the man, and when I moved him, I saw another little man. So I moved that man, and there was another one. So I digged down in the pot, and I got about 10 men out of there. Then I went to the other flower, and got a few of them out of there. And so I'm just playing with the men. Now I could imagine whoever she had to root on was someplace going, while well, I'm playing with it. <laughs> Women started coming to my grandmother's house saying to her, saying, the spell that you had on is broken. The spell is broken. She said, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I, I, I do what I do. No, I break it. I break it. I break it. I break it. I can't imagine. And, 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 and she came up into the room where I was at, and there was a few of the men toys that was on the thing. She said, what did you do with this? Don't touch it. And she took those things and put them back in the dirt. But my grandmother told me, she said, for whatever reason, even the ones that I put the spell back on and put it in the dirt, it was like the spell wouldn't hold. As a young man, the anointing of God that was on my life to break yokes was already activated. And I come to tell you that every root, every witchcraft assignment, every demonic attack, that you've been under is about to break right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Holy Ghost fire! My grandmother. My grandmother walked with, a, with, with, with an authority that was so strong that when she would come to the house and I would be sleeping, I would wet the bed. One afternoon, I came home, and my mother was in the house, leaning up against the wall, shaking her head, tears coming out of her eyes. I said, Ma, what's wrong? She said, son, sit down. I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. I said, what? She said, sit down, boy. And I sat down. She said, son, Grandma Bloomer just died. I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Take her home forever and let the world go free. But she died physically, but would show up in my dreams. It's demonic. In my book, Witchcraft in the Pews, there's a chapter in there called A Demon in My Bedroom. It's talking about Grandma Bloomer. There's a number of you in this room that periodically you're in your room sleeping and you wake up but you can't open up your eyes. You can't move your hands. You can't speak. But you know that you are awake. There's a heavy, heavy, heavy spirit inside the room and you can't get free. And you were taught that when you are attacked by demons, you gotta say the name of Jesus. That's not true. If you think the name of Jesus, it's just as powerful as saying the name. If I can't say it, if I think it, Demons has got to go. I'm telling you right now that those of you who have been under attack, the proprietor of a spirit that has been sent to you, there is no way that this ministry and this house can be this powerful without there being groups and regiments and legions of demons assigned to distract. What is it? 
about one man that the forces of evil wants to stop. One guy. What are you holding on the inside of you prophetically that has not been released to the nations? Because it's already been released to the nations, then uh, the devil don't have any problem. The devil's got a problem because there is a revelation and a secret that you and me are going to release today. Have your seat. You, you, you would want to hear what I'm going to say right now. How many of you pray? You pray. How many of you pray all the time? One would ask the question, what is prayer? What is prayer? Revelation. When you are praying, the devil becomes prey. You missed it. When you are praying, the devil becomes prey. When you're not praying, you become prey. Man ought to always pray and not faint. When you enter into the assignment and the commission of prayer, whether it's prophetic prayers, whether it's warfare prayers, whether it's intercessory praying, what have you, when you enter into those particular, and particularly to the intercessors in the room. Let me see the hands of the intercessors in the room, the intercessors in the room. If I were to take a poll right now and ask the intercessors, what do they do in their praying? Most of them would say what? That you pray for people. It's not true. Intercessors don't pray for people. Intercessors prays as the person and not for the person. An intercessor, you enter the seed in order to enter the session that the person is having a problem in. And then you pray them through and you come back up out of the seed into this realm waiting to be reassigned to go back into a seed to enter into a session to get a person free. When you pray, Grass starts growing in front of your face. <laughs> when you pray, your lion's hair begins to grow. When you pray, you stand back and every demon that saw you a minute ago is looking around trying to figure out where you at. When you pray, you become invisible to the devil and that's what he doesn't like about you. And Jesus was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The devil knew what his assignment was. The Holy Spirit knew what his assignment was. And Jesus knew what his assignment was. Jesus' assignment was to be tempted of the devil. The Holy Ghost's assignment was to carry him into the wilderness. And the devil's assignment was to tempt him. But when Jesus got into the wilderness, he did something that changed the game. He fasted and prayed. And when he started fasting and praying, Satan couldn't find him for 40 days and 40 nights. He had to figure out what could he use. Now the devil is scratching his head trying to figure out what do I use to get this Jesus that I'm supposed to tempt. When Jesus is finished praying, Jesus opens up his mouth and he says, I hunger. Then the devil turns us, okay, I'll use his appetite. Understand this, that much of the attacks that you are under are things that you articulated out of your mouth. Turn to your neighbor and say, shut up, shut up, shut up. The Bible tells us a story of Job. Somebody said that the reason why Job was in the crisis that he was in because Job don't know why he was in the crisis he was in. He was just in the crisis anyway. That's not true. The Bible tells us the story that Job had uh, seven sons and three daughters and they would have parties and they would have the type of parties that, that bothered Job. He didn't know what went on inside those parties. So he would rise up in the morning and he would do what? He would sacrifice sacrifices according to the number that was inside the house. And this is what Job says, prevent, pre prevent you, that they didn't curse God to his face. So now Job reveals unto principalities and powers what bothers him. So when the devil comes to Jesus, the devil comes to Jesus with something that Job said. If you take this away from him, he'll curse you to your face. Job's attack is a result of his 
intercession. And many of us, glory be to God, if we're not careful, the very thing that we intercede for people for will be the very thing that will take us out if we don't have a waster where we can take that thing and destroy it. You like the part of the scripture that said, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Let's change it. And you're like a roaring lion. <laughs> Waiting for the opportunity to pounce on Lucifer like Lucifer has pounced on you. You're going to walk in victory like you never walked in before. You cannot ask the apostle to pray for you and he prays for you for a financial blessing and then you don't sow a seed and then you complain the whole time if you got faith you got faith and when your faith is working every attempt of the enemy is trying to find your doubt and the reason why i got victory is because if i got faith doubt don't show up oh i'm gonna say it one more time doubt does not show up where faith is faith will defeat your doubt but doubt will defeat your faith. And so when God sends a word to you, you hold on to the word that he spoke and the devil can't find you. I come to tell you that there's a few of us that's about to march into the enemy's camp and take back by force everything that he stole from us. Ah, shake your neighbor and say, I want it back, I want it back. I want everything back that you took from me, I want it back, and I shall have it back. I want my name back. I want my standing in the community back. I want my house back. I want my health back. I want my wealth back. I want everything that you took from me, I want it back. Somebody shout and say, give it back, give it back, give it back. Give it back, give it back, give it back. Tell them, say, give it back, give it back, give it back, give it back. Say it, say, give it back. Yeah, let me say one more thing, and then we're going to pray. I walked into this room, and in the room, it wasn't the room that I walked into when I was here a month ago. It's a different room. Mm. You've come to the end of your assignment in this building. Come to the end of your occupying this building. So Satan wants to do everything within his power to stop you from where God has already released you to. Touch the neighbor and say, our next move, our next move. This house is moving to a new house. Open up your mouth and say, debt free, debt free, debt free. Uh, da, 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 da. Debt free, say debt, 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 debt free. Debt free. Listen to me. See, see, there's a few of you in this room that already know. And not only is it going to happen for this house, it's going to happen for your house. Listen to me, no joking, no playing. I have a different anointing on my life. I come to tell you right now that there's 112 millionaires that God is about to make in the name of Jesus. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, I don't know what you're screaming for. You better run up here and throw a seed on this altar and decree and declare what God is about to do. Deliverance. 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 Today, God is about to make you over again 
and make you the instrument that he desires for you to be. And use your past as fuel, as gas to propel you into your next height. Everything that happened to you that was wrong was for your good. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to purpose. We also know that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. We also know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Bringing into captivity every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We also know that everything the devil tried to do to stop us didn't work. Have your seats for a quick moment. Let's close with this. There's been an attack in the body of Christ on giving. On giving. The Holy Ghost said to me that in this vast crowd, vast amount of people who come here and support, he showed me numbers. He showed me 27, 32. 27, 32. And I said, God, what is that? He said, that's the number of tithers and supporters in the ministry. 27% to 32. 27% from 100 is what? James, quickly, 27 from 100 is what? 73. So if the 20% is activated, 73% of the people who go here don't support financially. 32%, what is that? When the, when the 32 is, in, is activated, 60 8% of the people who follow you, come to the church, do not tithe. Now, I have not had any discussions with your bishop. Check the books and those are going to be the numbers. 27% to 32%. Satan knows this and he's clear on it. He's clear on it. That when it comes down to the tithe and the offering, if the tithe is not 100, then the blessings on the house can't be 100. Now look at the blessings that the Lord has done. He's done all of this for you, 27, 32. What would he do at 50? What would he do at 65? Oh, let's not even talk about 100. Do you know why this church is so quiet right now? Because 73% of them are crooks, thieves, robbers, bandits. You hear? It's only 27% of the people that's clapping. Those are the ones that's paying. Nudge your neighbor and say, don't be a thief. Twenty-seven percent to thirty-two percent. In this house, anything you want to do can be done with a spoken word. One word spoken. Let me see the hands of those of you that pay tithes in the church. Come on, sit your hands up. Pastor, can you, can you look at, can you see the hands there? Can you see the hands there? Let me see the hands that pay the tithes. You pay tithe. You pay tithe. You don't pay tithe. You pay tithe. You don't pay tithe. You don't pay tithe. You pay tithe. You don't pay tithe. Stop it. You don't pay, you, 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 you pay, you don't pay. Stop, put your hand down. You don't pay, you don't pay tithe. 
You don't either. Stop it. Your nails look nice, but you don't pay tithe. <laughs> Bishop Bloomer, what are you talking about? Let me see the hands of those that pay tithe. Liar. <laughs> this is warfare. I'm telling you how the enemy is coming after you. Those who pay tithes, raise your hand. Liar. <laughs> now ask me why did I say that? Because you can't pay tithe. The only person that can pay tithe is the priest. You bring it, he pays it. I'm closing. Abram, 316 servants. They come and they steal his family. He goes and he turns his servants into warriors. They go and they defeat five armies, five countries, five kingdoms. He comes back with 15 streams of wealth to Melchizedek, who is the high priest, who incidentally has no beginning or end, no mother, no father. He is Jesus in the Old Testament. He goes to him and the first thing Jesus says, before we do this tithe thing, I want to connect with you, so I want you to take this bread and drink this wine. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. The first communion. The first communion is served to Abram. Abram then pays tithe of all. He doesn't just pay his tithe, he pays the tithe of the 316 other individuals. The Bible says that Levi paid tithe while he was yet in the loins of his father. All of your children are tithers because of you. When the Bible says, Malachi chapter number three, will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me, but wherein have you robbed me? He said, in tithes and in offering, you're cursed with a curse. He's not talking to the congregation, he's talking to the priests who stole the tithe. Not the congregation. Malachi chapter number one, verse number six says, A son honors his father, a servant his master. If then I be your father, where is my honor? If I be your master, where is my fear? O priest that despise my name. He said, wherein have we despised if you offered polluted bread upon the tables of the Lord, where the tables of the Lord is contemptible? He said, how have we polluted? He said, if you offer the lame for sacrifice, is that an evil? If you offer the blind for sacrifice, is that? He said, offer it unto your governors and see would he be not pleased with your persons. I'm closing with this. When Abram showed up to the high priest to pay the tithe that his servants brought to him, the devil showed up too. The king of Sodom showed up and he said to him, you don't have to pay tithe. Just give me your warfare strategy and I'll let you, he says, no. Not a thread or a shoelace of what I earned will I take until one-tenth is turned over to God. It is the story of what tithe is. The word tithe, there is a Hebrew word for it that I can't pronounce, so I'll just tell you what it means. Tenth, or to the tenth part, it also means test. Every time you get your paycheck, the two kings shows up. God and mammoth. And you can't worship both of them. You're going to love one and hate the other. And mammoth shows up and says, you got to pay me. And God shows up and says, I'm waiting for your priests to show up with your sacrifice. The man of God stood up today and he held an envelope up in his hand and he said, this is the determining factor of how your year is going to go in 2020. Obey me and be blessed. Disobey me and you'll have to come back to me for me to break the curse that you put on yourself. And we spend most times breaking curses over the children of God who put it on themselves because we worship mammoth. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me see with. I open to you the windows of heaven and I pour you out blessings that there shall not be room enough for you to receive and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The only area where God 
ask you to pay him to do something is in the area of tithe and devour. And many of you, the enemy is destroying simply because you're holding an accursed thing that belongs to God and it doesn't belong to you. And because of that, these demonic forces can walk through your life at will. Many times people come for deliverance and I ask them the question, do you pay tithe? Do you give to God? With yeah, but you know, I, 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 that's, that's, that's a door to the demonic. So I command this house in the name of Jesus, be healed of church hurts. Be healed of it. Be delivered and set free from things that happened to you in your upbringing. And thirdly, bring God his money. Bring God his money. And when you do that, you're going to see God move like never before. A sacrifice is not measured by how much you give. It's measured by how much you have left. I was raised very, very poor. But I received the word from the Lord, from you, that money was coming to me. That doors was opening up for me. That God had to close a door in order to open a door. I loved doing what I was doing. And because I'm loyal, I would have stayed there forever. God allowed that to happen to move me out. But the word of the Lord came back again. In my first commitment to television, I was a host of a TV network. But in my second one, I'm an owner. Yeah. Woo! Wednesday of this week coming is the closing of our next level. And there was no way you could have known that. It is not on Facebook. It is no discuss. There's no apostle that you could have not known it. There's no possible way you couldn't have known it. You couldn't have made. It. You couldn't have known it. And today, I am here to return back to my roots on deliverance and breakthrough. And I'm going to pray for a few of you. The hardest person to wake up in a room is the one who's not asleep. There are some demonic manifestations that you see that is not demonic. It is a person looking for attention or needing to take their medicine. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every demonic force stands at attention. There's no scriptural basis for demons tearing up whole houses standing in front of a man or a woman of God that has the authority to speak the name of Jesus. The sons of Sceva, they had their issue for two reasons. One, they were vagabond Jews, exorcists. So they were performing exorcists. And number two, they had no authority and didn't know who Jesus is. Well, this morning I know who Jesus is. And those of you who've been tormented by demonic forces, I don't believe that any believer can be possessed by demons, but I do believe that you could be oppressed by them, agitated by them. It is possible to have possession of a car and the bank still has the title to it. Today, God has title to your life. And I want to dispossess the devil that has had possession of you. Every person in this room who the enemy has been harassing, voices, 
accident prone, reoccurring accidents, reoccurring addictions. Demons showing up in your bedroom, molesting you. Today is the day that breakthrough and deliverance becomes your portion. Can they move that? I'm going to count to five, which is the number of grace. And every person who's been under an attack, I want to see you at this altar. Breakthrough is going to be your portion. In the name of Jesus. I need the oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, bless me now, my. I come to thee. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I am tasting a a run in my mouth. This is cocaine, Haron. Street term for it, Haron. This is reoccurring addictions. You, you had freedom, but that thing has come back. I I never miss God because I don't try to be anything that I'm not. Those of you who the enemy has been fighting like that, raise your hand. Reoccurring addictions. It's breaking right now in the name of Jesus. What, what, what's your name? James. Ah. James, when I was preaching, I talked about eight, nine, twelve. Be free tonight. It's not your fault. You don't have to carry the burden of it anymore. Loose him now in the name of Jesus. Somebody clap those hands and give God praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Woo! Reoccurring addictions. Reoccurring addictions. Reoccurring addictions. Reoccurring addictions. Hold your hand up high. Hold your hand up high. Now, Father. In the, listen, let me, let, let, let me say this to you. I minister at the altar a little bit different than apostle. I don't touch a lot of people. I send the word and it accomplishes that which it's sent to do. So your faith is going to have to meet up with this word that is being spoken 
for your victory and your shakata and your breakthrough and your breakthrough and your breakthrough yeah i just heard you james i just heard you i yes i just heard you and yes complete deliverance complete breakthrough and yes you're going to be able to forgive the people that put you in the predicament that you're in in the name of woo! somebody shout out and say embrace the prophetic embrace the prophetic all right reoccurring addictions hold those hands up in the name of there's a there's a young man right there right there yeah you no you yeah you what's your name yes huh i can't hear him part the red sea but Part the sea. Mzwandi le given timber. Walk him this way just a little bit. Walk this way. Very, very slowly. Walk this way. Slowly. Slowly. That's right there. Good. Good. Lift both of those hands. Yeah. Today is the beginning of your breakthrough. Completely, you don't need that. Completely, from the crown of your head to the. Does does he understand English? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Bishop. Okay, you understand what I'm saying. Yes. All right. Um, everything is going to come back together for you this time. <laughs> Family, everything, in the name of Jesus. And your testimony is going to be the power of your ministry. I, receive it. I, receive it. I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. I curse it in the name of Jesus. I command you, devil, to take your hands off of God's property right now. In Jesus' name, somebody bless the Lord and praise him. Let's pray together. Those of you reoccurring addictions, re what's your name? I'm sorry, the Holy Ghost is in here. Apostle, can I explain to them what happens to me? When I'm ministering, I get arrows with certain color lights on it. When I ask the person their name, then the Lord gives me information. So he deals with me a little bit differently, and that's what you're seeing. Your name, your name is what? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. Today is the day of your breakthrough, your deliverance, and your freedom. You can move the microphone, throw those hands up really, really high in the name of Z. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay, because your addiction is something that is manifesting itself, but it's not that. So I come against two spirits. One, a hex. You know what a hex is? No, no, I don't know. Um, it's a curse, a negative word that was spoken against you and your family. A, a, a negative thing spoken against a blood covenant yes. I come against that now in the name of Jesus yes. Amen. and number two loneliness yes. God just showed me your heart yes. fragmented yes. father yes. fix this right now in the name of Jesus Amen. Amen. from the crown of her head Amen. to the sole of her feet in Jesus' name, somebody clap those hands and bless, bless God. All right, let's do this. Those of you for reoccurring addictions, reoccurring addictions, let's confess right now. Say, Lord Jesus, set me free from this spirit that keeps on returning to me. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to do a crazy practice. Those of you that are dealing with reoccurring addictions, I want you to take your hands and I want you to cup it like this. All right? And I want you to put it over your mouth. Now, God does strange things. I want you to put it over your mouth like this. And I want you to confess in your hand what that addiction is. Whether it's drugs, alcohol, gambling, sexual addictions, pornography, etc. And we're coming against that in the name of Jesus today. And you're going to leave here with power in the name of Jesus. Ready? Get it up. Speak it now. You know what it is. 
Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Get ready. Speak it. Now, look at me. Ball it up like it's a piece of paper. Like it's a piece of paper. You got it? You ain't balled it up yet. Ball it up. Like it's a piece of paper, like it's nothing. Seems a little crazy. Some of you are still confessing. Ball it up like it's a piece of paper. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ball it up. Here it comes. Ball it up. 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 Because you know what you're doing? You're choking life out of it. The thing that had you, you now got it. There is a wave of the Holy Ghost about to hit this altar in the next two minutes. Loose him, 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 lo
The anointing of God is blessing you for you could have destroyed some folks, but you didn't. Now he's going to lift every heavy burden off of you and off of your life and give you the desires of your heart because the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that you passed the test. Amen. Your backsliding days are over. Amen. The fire of the Holy Ghost is coming back into your life. The appetite for the world is about to leave you. And the appetite for the kingdom is about to fill your presence. Lift those hands and cry out to God. Say, Lord, take me back. Say it. Say, Lord, take me back. Somebody give the Lord a hand praise in this house in the name of Jesus. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Many of you, many of you are waiting for me to do something. I ain't doing nothing. What's about to happen to you will happen. When, what's your name? When you follow the instructions. You. What's your name? You. Me? You. Yeah. Tandela. Huh? I'm Tandela. Tandela? Yes. Okay. This is what I hear. Shakadabasata. Help me, Holy Ghost. I hear feet walking towards you in the night. And you don't want those feet there. But they keep on coming. I command you to walk in liberty and in freedom devil take your hands off of god's property today in the name of jesus this is your day of freedom the abuse is over the holy ghost is taking over your life the place that you sleep is going to be a good place to sleep in the name of jesus somebody scream holy ghost fire squeeze it Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. My God, he's at this altar. Squeeze it. Let's pray the prayer. Let's pray the prayer. This is the last time, devil, you attack this ministry. This is the last time, devil, you come after this house. This is the last time you come after our man servant. This is the last time you come after our woman servant. This is the last time you come after our name. This is the last time you come after our children. We come against you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, let the Holy Ghost move from one side to the other side. The power of the Holy Ghost right now. Receive it 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 now. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and praise him. Open up, open up, open up, open up, open up. Hold it up. Hold it up high. Turn around. Face one of those doors. Turn around. Face one of those doors. On the count of three, we're going to release this thing. You're going to give him praise, and you're leaving here with the victory. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. That you was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we're healed. We thank you, dear God, because no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, dear God, because demons and devils have no right. They have no authority. You have given us the power. These signs shall follow them that believe in your name. They shall cast out devils. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we release this anointing in this house for victory and breakthrough. One, two, three, throw it, let it go. Open up your mouth and give God a praise in the building. The more you praise Him, the more your victory comes. The more you praise Him, your breakthrough is in your praise. 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 
Your breakthrough is in your praise. Your breakthrough is in your praise. Ah! Your breakthrough is in your praise. Your breakthrough is in your praise. Open up your mouth and praise him. Open up your mind. There it goes. 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 There's a wave of the anointing that is setting God's people free. Open up your mouth and praise him. My God. Open up your mouth and praise him. Woo! Give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. 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 Lay your hands on your own self. Decree and declare your deliverance. Decree and declare your breakthrough. Jesus. Woo. Give a lot of praise in this place. Give him a 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 praise in this place. Whatever had you, bow your fists up and look at it and say, I got you now. And I cast you away from me. Woo! You about to walk with victory, walk with deliverance, walk with breakthrough. Open up your mouth, give God praise as you go back to your seats. Magnify him as you go back to your seats. Lift them up as you go back to your seats. Give God a praise in the building. Ah! Lift up your lift, give him a praise. 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 Ah! Give him a praise. Satanaba. Rotorobo Sakataba. Ete debo Satanaba. Shandaraba Satanaba. Ete debo Sakatatata. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We got the victory. If you got the victory, open up your mouth and say, I got the victory. Oh, I got the victory. Woo. Now I come against every spirit who would try to follow you back at home. I send you to the dry places right now. Joy, peace, happiness, prosperity is the portion of God's people in the name of Jesus. Give him praise in here today. I said, give him praise in here today. There's a praise, there's a praise that we sing at home, at our home church, at our altar calls. When we get finished praying, we say, no matter what the devil did, no matter what he was trying to do it, it won't work like this. Say to your neighbor, say, it won't work like this. Say it again, say, it won't work like this. It won't work like this. Say it, say it, say it. It won't work like this. Put your hands together and it won't work like this. Put your hands together now. Oh, it won't work. One more time. You won't work. It won't work like this. Put your hands together. Come on. It won't work. It won't work like this. Like this. Stop. 
When we were closing the message, the Holy Ghost spoke 27, 32. 27, 32. 27 and 32 is how much? 27 and 32. 27. Huh? 59. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're decreeing and declaring. By the beginning of the year, this church would at least be at 59% tithers. That curse must be broken. I want every believer and every member of this church, listen to me clearly right now. Every believer and every member of this church to go into your substance, into your pocket, and pull a seed out of at least 200 ren and run down to this altar, drop it on the altar and say, the curse is broken. And if you know somebody that don't have to, give them to, start moving right now in the name of Jesus. That seems insignificant, but God is gonna take the small and make it big. Some of you still standing there, you ain't even moving. Everybody in this church, get a seed in your hand and make your way to this altar and release it. We're going to 59%. Because the way the devil's been trying to do it, it won't work like this. I'm waiting for you. All out of the rafters, all in the nave, all up in the balcony, in the name of Jesus. This ain't for Bloomer. This is for this house. Shatadaba sataba sikobo shatadaba atadana masata ta 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 atadaba sakata. Let's do it together. It won't work. Yeah. have many of them but I ministered today out of this book the little boy in me and I talk about the combination to life for me and I know that it can release some things in your life I'm gonna put it on sale for you we only have a few of them and I brought another book empowered from above they're coming from everywhere pastor thank you so much for igniting the fire up under me again in Jesus name <laughs>
If you are seated, I want you to stand up. I had asked from the hand of the bishop, George Blumham, these two books. So I may insist because I believe you can get it online. The little boy in me. Nothing greater than what you have encountered. Jesus. Your testimony. Empowered from above. I want, he didn't bring copies for that, but I thought to bring them. We, we, we have some that will be available, so you must hurry and get it. And for those of you watching us from around the world, I present to you these books. I want you to please make sure that uh, you get the material, meaning the two books, and uh, you feed your spirit from it. They will bring you deliverance. They will bring you strength. They will enlarge your path. The little boy in me. Now, we have seen and many have seen and know Bishop. Bishop's ministry is one that has been trialed and tested. He had gone through whatever you can ever imagine for himself and for others. Because you see, in spiritual warfare, his anointing goes beyond him fighting the devils that are knocking his own personal doors. In fact, I am speaking prophetically. Even the battles that he himself had to fight, the road he had to take, were all a setup for him to know how to stand in spiritual warfare for many others across the body of Christ and the globe. Jesus. And Bishop, this far you have done what the Lord had asked you. There are ministries that are still standing because you had stepped in with the anointing that the Lord had given you to bring about deliverance. But the shift I have seen taking place in you, a shift that brings you back to the great anointing that many people came to know you by, what you have is unique. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I say it without fear of being contradicted that what you carry in the spiritual warfare arena realm mm. is unique unique is spelled u n i q u e many in the body of Christ today um benefit fitted from that anointing, but now they will see it operating differently. Amen. You have always been in the prophetic, but I feel the Lord is saying, launch yourself into the deep when it comes to the prophetic. Because you've been here and there withholding. Withholding when God speaks to you. Now, Bishop sees a number of things when he's ministering. He sees arrows on people. That's why here and there you saw him when all of us were here. He would say, what's your name? And a number of things unfold in his spirit as soon as the contact is made with what God or who God is pointing to. The contact is made when he asks, what's your name? And you say, my name is B. When you say B, whatever proceeded after came from the Holy Ghost. But Bishop, something had happened already a month ago when you stood here. This is not a common altar. At all. This is not just a platform. This is a different altar. And your coming has been a setup. 
The world needs you, but they knew you. More than the world needed the old you. Because your assignment that is ahead of you, God is taking you on the path you have never walked on before. Is elevating you in the level you have never been. And it requires you to stand on the anointing he gave you from the onset in the spiritual warfare as a general, but also standing in the prophetic. Today, before we close and allow Bishop to go, he will be taking his flight today. Few things I want us to do. The first one, I just want to ask you, if you feel it inside, to stretch your hands to hold Bishop. If you're not feeling it inside, don't. Because he is no ordinary man. And whatever you do now will bless you. It will change you. I receive. My bishop, I want us to pray for what God has set before you. Because even as you go, there is a new wind that is blowing. There Thank is you, Jesus. God is turning things around for your good. Mm. And the ministry of power, as we have seen, and even more will begin to manifest. The captives will go free through your ministry. The, of Jesus. the glory of God that will come upon men and women as you will step in, begin to pray. Ramazokoto, Barabakente, Rekato, Koto Boshia. Makata rekete kebebe. Show mona mazende. Enlarge him, O God. Lead him where he needs to be, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for confirming your word. Oh Jesus, reya bossa, sereba sata. Thank you, Lord. For the death of the prophetic rising in the church of George Bloomer. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. O oh God, confirm your word. May God will The world knew him, but now, God, they are about to know him. Thank you, Jesus. Release, O oh God, through your prophet. I stretch my hand on you. Something big that has begun here today is reaching everyone. I receive it. Zete Rebe Young man, with your hands up. You there. Yeah, wave it. Wave it. Is that you? Please come. Come, come, come quickly. Everyone else, lift your hand. Lift your hand. I am counting one, two, three. And the anointing of God will reach you, will lift you up to a dimension of the spirit, even as we close this season, that you have never been preview to, never be open to. Are you ready? ready. Lift your hand as high as you can get. There will be people screaming of the power of God. There will be fire going through people, men and women's spines. You will have goosebumps because that is your deliverance. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it! Take it! Take it! Take it! Take it! Pray, speak to God, pray, speak to God.
you lift your hands up a new dawn we are at the end of the year the closing of this year Portia my daughter touch my hand I'm blessed to see you touch my hand God bless you in this season my daughter God bless you in this season May transformation take place, my daughter. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Zabota Karabaset. In this end of season, something new, something big is being done by the Lord. Touch me, my daughter. I release that grace, that power. Take it! Of Jesus. Hey, turn around, hey, turn around. Receive it. Alpha. You, you see, when we say Alpha and Omega, we say it's the beginning, it's the end. You will end strong. I receive it. Because you see, if you know him as Alpha, can I also touch you? I see you touching the doctor. Can, can I also touch your hand? Can I also touch your hand? Katoko Toshia. Raketa. Doctor, can I also touch your hand? You guys were greeting each other. I release the grace of God, the power of God. Take it. Somebody say, I receive it. You receive it. Something is happening in the atmosphere. I receive it. Hallelujah. You are Yahweh. Touch my hand, my son. 
you are born not to lose you are born to receive you are born to keep and to multiply I speak plenty even in this season Jesus. one two three touch Mega for prosperity no matter what the devil does it is yours it is yours it is yours it is yours no matter what the devil does it's yours it's yours my daughter and omega is your way you are your What is your name? Sanele. Sorry? Sanele. Sanele. Yes, sir. Sanele. Sanele, yes, sir. Sanele. Sanele. Bishop, come. Let me minister together. I, I, I saw him there. Standing with his hands up. Rima Tobo. He's the first person I prayed for or I called. Your name is... Sanele. Ramazoko Soto Koshia. You came to church, or oh, this is your church? I came here Friday, was my first time here, sir. Friday, meaning the yes. day before yesterday. The day before yesterday was my first time coming here. So, this is not your church? You can say that. We can say that. <laughs> it's because you came on Friday, and today is Sunday. Yes, sir. Did you make friends? I made one friend. <laughs> you make one friend? Yeah. And that you have a friend here? Sorry, sir? You have the friend here? No. You came alone? Oh, I came with someone, yes. You came with someone else? Yes, 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 I came with someone. Okay. You, you came with someone else? Yes. I, I want you to bless him. He said, this is the first weekend here. He came on Friday. And today is Sunday. And his name is Sanele. Sanele. Yes, All right, Bishop says Sanel. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that, that. Oh. <laughs> uh, what's the meaning of Sanele? Sanele means uh, enough or sufficient. Enough. Sufficient. Sufficient. Yes. Uh, uh, enough. All right. enough is sufficient. Enough is sufficient. Nothing is sufficient or sufficient. enough. Sanel. Sanel. Is it really? Is, is it really sufficient? Is it sufficient enough for you to obey the voice of God? Let's go back to 2013. About 2000. 13, when God spoke. Do you know me? No, sir, I don't. Come on, Bishop. You don't know me. You don't no, know me. Because this is very, very serious for me. You don't know me. We didn't talk or nothing like that. We don't Come know on, me. Bishop. Okay? I don't know the person that you came in the room with. I don't know that. I, that, that 2013. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. When the Lord spoke to you about joining or you went to a church someplace, 2013. 13. From 2013, let's go to 2000, 
17 when the Lord has been really really speaking to you about moving into ministry and starting your own but you haven't obeyed him Jesus Good Lord. Hey, I, I can't hear you I'm, I'm, I just can't hear you no, I'm tempted I'm tempted is that true it's very true yes it's true you join the ministry but God spoke to you, led you in 2013, in 2017. Here's, here's my temptation. Mm. My, I have a temptation. I have a temptation. Tell me. And my temptation is to say to him, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> 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 but the things I speak of out of the heart of God. <laughs> but that temptation for me is gone. Glory. The temptation is gone. Glory. To Jesus. Woo! The temptation is gone. No, 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 no. Uh, Bishop, uh, 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 look at the camera. Now I'm speaking. I, I love doing this. It helps me put things in context. Bishop ministered here. He released the grace and the power of God in spiritual warfare. I call this man. I'm pastor here. I pastor this church. But I don't know him. He came here two days ago for the Friday service and now it's a Sunday. I said with Bishop, I said, Bishop, I want you not just to disappear. You have some time. Let's minister together. I've given Bishop the microphone. And Bishop, you say, I don't know him. I'm from another country. See, you, you from another city. I'm from another country. And I can't understand his language. Jesus. You get me? The rise of the prophetic yeah. voice is here. Jesus. It's contagious. Bishop, you have spoken dates. You say 2013 14, God led him to a ministry. And you say, while in that ministry, 2017, the, the Lord, Lord spoke, spoke to him. I want to know. Don't say yes or no just to support him. I don't want you to support him. Is it really true? It's exactly precisely true. Glory to Jesus. Somebody it, give Jesus praise. I can't hear you. Hey. I, can't, I can't hear you. Hey. 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 Give him praise. The rise of the prophetic voice is here to stay. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that the prophets could not prophesy until the minstrels came out of the mountain with the sop trees and the harps. And when they came down, they began to play, the music began to play. Prophecy fell on the prophet and then prophecy fell on everybody who was around. Come on! We just experienced the Bible in this room. Hey. Get ready to do great and mighty exploits for the Lord. Obey his voice. Get under excellent leadership. It's the rise of the prophetic. And God is going to do extraordinary things in your life. And your broke days are coming to an end. In Receive Jesus. it. It, it. It doesn't get better than this. This is no show. This is God. Hallelujah. No, you have to tell them again. See, people watching from America, you have to tell them again, this ain't no show. No, nah, this is no show. Mm. This you have to tell them that. This is show. This is serious medicine. I don't know this guy. I ain't seen this guy. I don't know him. I don't know how to pronounce Come his on, name, Bishop. but I know what God said. And I know the prophecy Welcome that to God Hallelujah spoke. Ministries. Ah! We are AMI. We are 
apostolic, we are prophetic. This is who you are. This altar is an anointed altar. You can step here and remain the same. Shall we go? for allowing God to speak to you and boldly declare with precision of what the Lord had spoken to you about. And I pray that God may allow his spirit mm. to begin to flow even more. In Jesus' name. Unless the prophetic is established and operate as per the order of God in this end time, the church as we know it will become completely irrelevant. Today, in the age of technology, information is really at our fingertips. I can teach well about literally anything if I cannot demonstrate it. The power that that's that word is supposed to bring forth will be diluted along the way. Now, Bishop, the ministry of the word is not preaching. Mm. The ministry of the word is not just teaching. Mm. Please. Teaching and preaching forms part of the ministry of the word. Yes. I am not in the ministry of the word because I'm a preacher. Because any word that is not proven cannot be taken seriously. No court of law will accept a statement without an evidence. Come on now. Any statement that is not proven in any court of law. <laughs> Come on now. Take a walk. I like you too. I like you, I like you. I like you too. That's my stuff right there. Hey, come on! Unless the statement is backed up, With it, demonstration. Will, it will be thrown out of any court of Yes. Now, when we preach that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, and we close and go, we have not done the word justice. Because you see, when you keep on feeding people and baked bread, you're creating more problem in the system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than really feeding them. <laughs> hey. mm -hmm. uh, Woo! Yes. My, my name is Alfred. Hey. 
sabana. From now on, there will be a turnaround in your life. Your name is uh, San Nelly, you say. Yes, sir. My precious friend called you Sanel. <laughs> that, that, that fancy Sanelli. And you say it means enough. Yes. And the bishop said that you had joined a church. Yes, sir. God spoke to him. Yes, sir. You had joined a church. He said 2013 and 2014, you joined that church. And he said in 2017, God told you to move to start your own church. In 2013, he said, I, God said I must, I must start ministry work. And I started in 2013. And in 2017, he said he came back again and said, and said I must start my own church. And I, I didn't obey. So this is what the bishop said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Between you and the bishop, <laughs> you have never had that conversation. No, sir. Can I also jump in the boat? Yes, oh, yeah. Look, where you are, things are difficult. True. You're called in ministry, but yet you're driving. That's very true. You're like a driver. Yes, sir. But you're called into ministry. That's true. Ministry has been difficult. Yes, sir. Extremely so. Yes, sir. And that is because when God speaks and we do not listen, there are implications of it. The best time to do what God is saying is not when things are suddenly comfortable. It is when he's asking you to do it. Yes, sir. Irrespective of. But as for you, when God gave you that instruction, he expected you now, by now, to align it properly so you may not fall out of submission and be a breakaway. I am seeing City Church International. That's the church I go to. <laughs> it's called City Church International. Yes, sir. That is the church you go to. Yes, sir. But even lately, it has been difficult to go to church to minister or to do anything because of everything you carry. That's true. Is that correct? That's very correct. Tell me, who, who did you come with? Pamela, she's uh, she was sitting next to me. She stayed. She she sat next to you. Yes, she's sitting next to you. Oh, oh, okay. Me. Is that is that you? Come Boro Bosia. When he is receiving his deliverance, may you too receive your deliverance. I receive it. Now in the bracket, the reason why we keep on explaining this and speaking is because I believe that God is doing what he asked us to do. And he's doing that because he loves his people. Hear me. Do you love this man? You do? Yeah, because you coming to church like this. <laughs> uh -huh. My, my dearest daughter, is it also your first time? Yes, it is. You came together on Friday? Yes. So you have the same story. <laughs> you came together, and that this is the second time you are in the service in this weekend. Yes, sir. Because I am seeing Durban. Yes. And I'm seeing here. When I look at you, I see a twin. <laughs> I see a twin. Is that correct? Were you born or two from one womb? Yes. The twin is a brother. Yes. The reason why you're getting emotional is because I am also feeling the same. The Lord is taking me to Durban, on the street of Durban. I am in 2014. And this man is stabbed and is murdered. That is your twin. Your twin died murdered. Jesus. Is that correct? Yes. 
speak to me. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Now, t t t today, I, I, I don't want you to say something mm. for the sake of saying it. You, 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 you must speak it because you, it is true. If it's not true, it's not true. Don't support me. Don't say it because you don't want to embarrass the pastor. If you can, I dare you, embarrass me. <laughs> you, 2014, you lost your, your twin brother. He was murdered. 2015, something happened to you. You went to a party uh -huh. on your way back inside the car, the person who gave you a lift abused you, raped you in the car. 2014, your twin brother was murdered. 2015, this ordeal happened to you. Look at me. I, I'm about to help you in something very, very important. And that has nothing to do with uh, all I'm saying. It has to do with your health. Do you understand my language? Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's because you have found favor and God loves you. You're women of faith. Thank you, Jesus. There has been a lot of attacks in your family. But God sets himself now to be your God in a different way. Thank you, Jesus. 2014, your, your, your twin brother was stabbed, murdered on the street of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal. 2015, I see in the car, after the party, this man taking advantage of you. 2016, I see the 8th of September, I see the son of uh, your twin being knocked by a car. And uh, this, the father died already. And uh, now it is his turn. The child died, knocked by a car. Look at me. Your hair beautiful is covering your face. Uh, is that true? That's true. But hear this. All this has been the oppression of the enemy attacking you to pull you down. God has a plan for you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. You know, capability. That's where she works. Sorry? That's where she works. She works. Is that a, a call center capability? It's a call center. Yes, sir. It's a call center. Is that where she works? That's where she works. Can you pass a message to her and tell her that I see a turnaround? Hallelujah. Tell her. Tell Hallelujah. Her. Pastor sees a turnaround. And uh, hear me. You too must remain close. Find ways to always make peace when there are disturbance. Because on your side, I can see disturbance in relationship also. That's true. Because I am seeing a one year, six month child. <laughs> That's my son. Luliso. That, that's his name. That's the name of your that, child. That's my son's name, yes. So you have a child yes, who's one year, six months. And do you have a months. child? You also have a child. I do. But your child is not one year because I'm seeing one, 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 one is like 11 or so. Yes, that's you. Is that your child? Yes. I see. What's your name again? You know I know your name. You know Nklankla? <laughs> That's my son. Sorry? That's my son's name. Is that your son's name? Hey. Uh, Jesus is name. Somebody lift your hand. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Remember me today. Remember me today. You know, you have gone through great ordeals. But now, today, there is transformation. God is turning things around. Thank you, Jesus. God is changing things for you. Thank you, Lord. And for you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will. Oh, God. I hear you pray. I hear you pray. I'm hearing you pray. You are praying, expressing a wish to move from Durban to live in Johannesburg. 
That's true. Is that correct? That's true. Are you in agreement with that? Pardon? Are you in agreement with that? Yes. You, you want to move to Johannesburg? Yes. You don't want Durban anymore? No. You want Johannesburg? Yes. Everybody do this. Come. Yes. You are welcome. A door is open for you. Amen. A door is open for you. Amen. Come doesn't mean go and uh, dump your church, city, uh, church, international. Things has to be done correctly in the body of Christ. Yes. When things are not done correctly, an evil seed will follow you. Yes, are you yes. hearing me? I hear you, sir. I don't want you to feel bad that I have said the ordeal that had happened to you. It's simply because the Lord wanted it out. If it, it is not out there, Something will keep on recurring, mm. recurring, recurring. I. There are times where we say things that may look embarrassing, but the only reason why we say it, even in maturity, is because in the Lord we hear that this has to come to the open so its power may be destroyed. Just as God operates in intimacy and secret, so the power of the devil dwells in secret. Hence, many a times when the enemy is operating, hurting you or working with you, he obliges you to keep it in the dark. For when it is exposed to the light, it is destroyed. Her ordeal is destroyed today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Man, Jesus. I, I want us to pray for two or three people and we go home. I'm hearing a name of a young woman. Your name is Palesa. Palesa Hilton. Palesa Hilton. You have one brother. Palesa Hilton. Your brother Tawanda. Please come if you are here. Where, where's the person? Please come. Glory to Jesus. Palesa. We're, not, we're not used to stuff like this in the United States of America. So he can stand there and act like this ain't nothing if he want to. I'm talking to all of you that are watching from around the world. This is real here today. He's standing here. He's standing here like this ain't nothing. And, and my producer Mike over there, he don't believe nothing. Mike don't believe nothing. But today, Mike knows that God is in this place. Jesus is Lord. Is that you? Oh yes, man of God. Is that you? It's me, man of God. Your name is Palesa. Oh yes. Palesa Hilton. Yes, man of God. Now, now this is what I am seeing. The, the, the same type of ordeal that uh, God is setting her free from, the Lord is setting you free from. Where's your father? Where's your father? He passed away a long time back. Your father died a long time ago. Yes, pastor. Your mother. Sam. Your mother also died long time ago. Yes, pastor. Leaving you very young. Yes, I was still very young. I don't even know them properly. You do not even know them properly. Yes, ma'am. Because I am seeing in February 1995, your father died. In August, 1995, the same year, your mother died, leaving you seven years old. True, man of God. Is that true? Yes, man of God. At seven, you could not know or recognize, really, you had no, that's why you say you do not know them very well. Look at me, is that correct? Yes, I don't even know if they see of their faces. Sorry? I, I can't even know their faces. You can't remember the faces because yeah. that was a long time ago. So Your father died. Ago. Your mother died. Yes, man of God. Masoko to Then you moved to leave the, to live with your uncle and the wife. His name is Kenneth. The wife's name is Eunice. Is that correct? 
Oh yes, man of God. Is that correct? Yes, man of God. Uh, uh, look, I, I, I need you to understand what is happening. Yeah, if God yeah, will remember one person, is remembering all of us. If you are here, you know that God is doing something in your life. Just wave to me. Uh, look at me. I, I want you to look at me. If you can, if you're too emotional, understand. You, you lived with your auntie and your uncle, meaning that your uncle, the brother of your father, True man of God. Kenneth, That's the wife true. is Eunice. Yes, they had two God. children. Yes. I am seeing that Kenneth was a teacher. He's true man of God. But they have abused you, meaning first Eunice will always beat you up. Yes, man of God. It's true. Is that true? True man of God. She abused you. She she took advantage of you. Will it beat you up? Is that if she did not like you? Is that correct? She didn't even like me anymore. She did not like you. She didn't like me. And because your father is not like, your mother is not there. There are people who do not understand the pain of losing already parents. If you are out there, you are given an opportunity and access directly or indirectly to look after an orphan i want you to know that god's eyes are on you how you treat that child will have spiritual implication in your life amen she lost her father there are two you have a brother right yes man of god your brother's name is tawanda is that correct that's true man of god uh, you can see she's under the power look at me your, your brother's name is Tawanda. Yes, Tawanda right now is trying his best, living with a girlfriend. They have two children together. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, man, of course. Your deliverance is for today. Look at me. Receive it. Your, your brother Tawanda was born on the 30th, the 30, zero, three, zero, the 30th of March, 1983. Is that correct? True man of God. It's true. Yes, man of God. Just the two of you, seven years old, you go and live with your uncle, Kenneth, and the wife, Eunice. She abused you. Not only did they abuse you physically, but your uncle, the blood brother of your late father, when you were 15, started molesting you. Your uncle raped you repeatedly. 